Hello, I'm Maria Lisa Vaz. My roll number is AU180066. And today I'll be giving you a presentation about the exploitation of women in the novel The Upheaval. These are the contents of the presentation. First, I will be giving you a brief introduction about the novel. Next, I will be talking about the female characters in the novel. Third, I will be talking about the portrayal of these women in the novel. Fourth, the exploitation of women in the novel. Fifth, will be a conclusion and the, lastly, and the last slide will be my references. The introduction. Pundalik Naik's Achev is a captivating story of a town's sale of soul for profit and encompasses a shocking revelation of how a peaceful, family-centered way of living shifts to an ugly desire for lust, ethics, and morality to materialism, and from ecology to environmental degradation. It was at the spotlight after it was translated into English by Vidya Pai as The Upheaval. So this novel is a great example that shows us how um, a village is completely destroyed as it shifts from agriculture to, a, uh, to another business that is for mining. The novel not only depicts the destruction of the ecology of the village, but it also shows how the culture and the integrity of the village, villagers, that is the men, women and children are destroyed. It results in a shift to a, more sh uh, to a more selfish and materialistic way of living which came in along with the mining companies who had set their base in that village. The corrupt evolution of a village which sells, its, which sells itself to mining and the problems that it, its inhabitants encounter as an aftermath of this are vividly pro portrayed in the novel The Upheaval. The female characters in the novel. Now there are a number of female characters, but the main three characters in the novel are Rukmini, who is Pandari's wife, Kesar, who is Pandari and Rukmini's daughter, and Devki. Devki is Nanu's mistress, and we also later find out that she is Baboso's wife. The portrayal of women in the novel. The upheaval is seen in women as well as in nature. Now there is a similarity between Mother Earth and women. Both nurture and take care of their offspring. Therefore, both can be perceived as female entities. It is the destruction and turmoil due to mining which results in the havoc and corruption of women, nature and values. There are critics like Vandana Shiva and Maria Mies which sta who state that ecology is a feminist subject and have argued the same in their work which is titled Ecofeminism. Natural forces are reviewed as being feminine since they represent birth and fit fertility. Nature is equated to a mother, a nurturer and a caregiver. Pundalik's, uh, Pundalik's, uh, Pundalik Naik's The Upheaval has demonstrated a connection between women and nature to the practice through the cultural practices of the village and in the and in the end of the novel we come we see how both fall apart as a result of ecological errors the exploitation of women in the novel the women are traditionally bound and show a strong adherence to the cultural practices whereas the men are tempted by alcohol and other vices a clear example and one of the first examples of exploitation, we see the example of Rikmini pleading to Pandari to turn away from the lucrative offer of working at the mines and focus on his already prepared sewing rituals. The outcome of the persuasion and pleading by Rukmini is a slap on her face given by her husband. This slap is also significant to the fall of the ecological balance of the village and a slap to the cultural and traditional abiding community which has now been taken over by the mining industry.
The story about Baba Gavas of Naveli narrates the tale about Gavas, who is a rich landlord who lived a very luxurious and um, fancy life, and he constantly visited prostitutes despite having a wife as beautiful as a carved doll. His vices and his sluggishness led to his own downfall. His act of prioritizing a, a prostitute in Marcel, even after having a wife, who is described to be as gorgeous as a goddess in a palaquin, displays his cheap lustfulness and dominant male ego that uses women as objects of lust. Another example is when, rea when readers realize that Devki is Babuso's wife, who has endured a lot of suffering and abuse. Babuso is, re is revealed as an even more degrading character. He had the right to do all that. He was my husband after all. What bastard. He took money from absolute strangers and forced me to sleep with them. What could I do? I'd slog all day to earn money and he'd blow it all up on drink. Then beat me black and blue and make more money by forcing me to sleep with those men. So here we see how um, Babuso and his um, very wicked ways are put, are uh, the effect of his wicked ways are clearly seen in his uh, wife, Devki, who has now left him and is um, has moved on. Devki is also portrayed to be a woman who is a sort of e who is almost every man's woman, and all the drivers have access to her, and they are constantly abusing her and calling her names and uh, just being really uh, mean to her. She is also Nanu's mistress. Next, is we talk about Kesar and Manuel. Kesar is snared by the Catholic truck driver, Manuel, and is verbally, and is constantly verb, verbally abused by him. He's constantly making fun of her body or the way she's dressed or the clothing, that the way the clothing fits on her body. Manuel has repeatedly been found to address women as whores throughout the normal, throughout the novel. He makes fun of Devki and talks about women in a very disgusting manner that is throughout the novel. Abu taunts Rukmini when she offers him gruel and says, You might be a good wife, wearing yourself out like the broom that sweeps the house. But if a, but if a woman isn't smart enough, there's trouble ahead for her husband. But why am I telling you this? It's like reciting the Gita to a donkey. Now, Abu may be seen as the adult of the village, but through, his, through that very statement, he displays his masculine dominance and how he views women as uh, something, as people, as foolish beings who have no sense. And he equates them to being a donkey. He also later goes on to say that the girls were not allowed anywhere near the school, so they ran behind the oxen, clutching skirts that threatened to slip off. So the girls in the novel are depicted as naive, being vulnerable to sexual exploitation. In the upheaval, women perform domestic duties and suffer from separation and loneliness. They could go to the lake for a dip only in the dark to avoid the voyeuristic gaze of the men folk. Now, Manuel is a character who embodies male toxicity. Accustomed to a life of a truck driver who drinks and womanizes, he represents one of the most corrupt fallouts of mining. The language he uses to address the women at the mines is filled with double meanings, gross sexual remarks and disrespect towards them. He even says very disrespectful statements to the women while he is uh, emptying his truck. The verbal abuse is very obvious, as is the insinuation to Parab's medicine, which, which is hinting at unwanted pregnancies in young girls, owing to the lusty doing of truck drivers, of truck drivers just like him. The conclusion. The concluding part of the novel focuses on the visions of Shankar, who through his painting sees Columba as the eternal woman trying to safeguard her virtue by drawing her sari, her sari tightly around about herself. Shankar then goes on to destroy his paintings, and the, this destroying of his paintings symbolizes the overall destruction of the village 
which has now succumbed to the corruption of mining. Through Pundalik Naik's The Upheaval, we can see a clear demonstration of man's hold over women and how patriarchy bulldozes and sub subordinates women. The efforts made by characters like Devki and Savlo Master to rise against the limitations and be better individuals are feeble. The characters uh, eventually get consumed in the toxicity. The women struggle with difficult situations. They face societal pressures, economic and gender subordination and either surrender to them or they have to face them with resilience. However, something that we can note is that each female character portrayed by the author is unique and responds distinctively to whatever she is faced with. That is all. These are my references.